Lord Brahma said, when the unlimitedly powerful Lord assumed the form of a boar as a pastime, just to lift the planet Earth, which was drowned in the great ocean of the universe called the Garbhadaka, the first demon, Hiranyaksha, appeared, and the Lord pierced him with his task. Text 2. Jato ruchera janaya suya manu suya gya akuti sunu ramaran atha dakshinaya loka trayasya mahatim ahradayat adartim swayam bhuvena manu nahari riti anuktaha. The Prajapati first begot Suyagna in the womb of his wife Akuti, and then Suyagna begot demigods headed by Suyama, in the womb of his wife, Dakshina. Suyagna, as the Indra Deva, diminished very great miseries in the three planetary systems, upper, lower, and intermediate. And because he so diminished the miseries of the universe, he was later called Hari by the great father of mankind, namely Swayambhuva Manu. Text 3. Jagge chakar damagrihe dvija deva hutyam Stribi samam nababa virat magatim swamatre Uche yayatma samalam guna sanga pankam Asmin vidhuya kapilas yagatim prapede. The Lord then appeared as the Kapila incarnation, being the son of the Prajapati Brahmana Kardama and his wife Devahuti. Along with nine other women sisters, he spoke to his mother about self-realization, by which in that very lifetime she became fully cleansed of the mud of the material modes and thereby achieved liberation, the path of Kapila. Text 4. Atrera patyam abhikangsata ahatushto datto maya hamitiyad bhagavana sadattaha the great sage Atri prayed for offspring, and the Lord, being satisfied with him, promised to incarnate as Atri's son, Dattatreya, Datta, the son of Atri. And by the grace of the lotus feet of the Lord, many Yadus, Haya, Hayas, etc., became so purified that they obtained both material and spiritual blessings. Text 5 Taptam tapo vibhidha loka sishikshaya me Adao sanata svatapasasa chatu sano abhut Prakkalpa samplava vinashtam ihatma tatvam Samyag jagada munayo yad achakshatatman To create different planetary systems, I had to undergo austerities and penance. And the Lord thus being pleased with me, incarnated in four sanas, Sanaka, Sanatkumara, Sanan, Sanandana, and Sanatana. In the previous creation, the spiritual truth was devastated, but the four sanas explained in so nicely that the truth at once became clearly perceived by the sages. X6. Dharmasya Daksha Duhitariya Jinashtik Murtyam Narayano Nara Iti Svatapaha Pravi Brabhavaha Drashtvat Mano Bhagavato Niyama Valapam Devyaswa Ananga Pratana Ghatim Dhatipuhu To exhibit his personal way of austerity and penance. He appeared in twin forms as Narayana and Nara in the womb of Murti, the wife of Dharma and the daughter of Daksha. Celestial beauties, the companions of Cupid, went to try to break his vows, but they were unsuccessful, for they saw that many beauties like them were emanating from him, 
the personality of Godhead. Text 7. Kamam da hanti kritino nanuro sadrashtya. Rosam da hanta mutate na da hantyasyam. Soyam yad antaram alam pravisan bibheti. Kama katham nukunar asyaman asraeta. Great stalwarts like Lord Siva can, by their wrathful glances, overcome lust and vanquish him. Yet they cannot be free from the overwhelming effects of their own wrath. Such wrath can never enter into the heart of him, the Lord, who is above all this. So how can lust take shelter in his mind? Text 8. Vitya sapatniya dita patri bhiranti ragyo balo pisan upagatas tapasevanani tasma adat dhruvagatim granate prasanno divya astuvanti munayo yat upariyadhishtat. Being insulted by sharp words spoken by the co wife of the king, even in his presence, Prince Dhruva, though only a boy, took to severe penances in the forest. And the Lord, being satisfied by his prayer, awarded him the Dhruva planet, which is worshipped by great sages, both upward and downward. Text 9. Yat venam upathagati nidhijabhakya vajra nishlushya parusha bhagava bhagam nirai patantam Maharaja Veena went astray from the path of righteousness, and the Brahmanas chastised him by the thunderbolt cars. By this, King Veena was burnt with his good deeds and opulence and was en route to hell. The Lord, by his causeless mercy, descended as his son by the name of Prithu, delivered the condemned king Vina from hell and exploited the earth by drawing all kinds of crops as produce. Text 10. Nabhera savarishiba asasu devi suinur yovai chachara samadrekja da yogacharyam yat paramahamsyam rasya padam amananti svashtha prasannata kar the Lord appeared as the son of Sudevi, the wife of King Navi, and was known as Rishabdeva. He performed materialistic yoga to equibalance the mind. This stage is also accepted as the highest perfectional situation of liberation, wherein one is situated in oneself and is completely satisfied. Text 11. Satrema masa bhagavana hayasira sato, saksha sayagya purushasta paniya varanaha, chando mayo makamayo akila deva tatma, vacho vabhugur usati svasato asyanashtaha. The Lord appeared as the Hayagriva incarnation in a sacrifice performed by me, Brahma. He is the personified sacrifices, and the hue of his body is golden. He is the personified Vedas as well, and the super soul of all demigods. When he breathed, all the sweet sounds of the Vedic hymns came out of his nostrils. Text 12. Matsyo Yuganta Samaye Manu Nopalabdhaha Shoni Mayo Nikila Jiva Nikaya Ketaha Visram Sitana Urubhaye Salila Mukhaname Adaya Tatra Vijaharaha Vedamargan at the end of the millennium, the would-be Vaivashvyata Manu of the name Satyavrata would see that the Lord in the fish incarnations is the shelter of all kinds of living entities up to those in the earthly planets. Because of my fear of the vast water at the end of the millennium, the Vedas come out of my Brahma's mouth and the Lord enjoys those vast waters and protects the Vedas. Text 13. Shiro dadhava amara dhanava yutha patnam Unmatnatam amratalabdhaya adidevaha Prishthena kachapava pura vidadhara gotram Nidrakshano adriparivarta kasanam kanduhu The primeval lord then assumed the tortoise incarnation in order to serve as a resting place, pivot, for the Mandara mountain, which was acting as a churning rod. 
The demigods and demons were churning the ocean of milk with the Mandara mountain in order to extract nectar. The mountain moved back and forth, scratching the back of the tortoise, of Lord Tortoise, who, while partially sleeping, was experiencing an itching sensation. Text 14. Traipishta porubhaya hasa nishimha rupam Kritva brahmad brukutivdam strakara lavakram Daitendram asugadaya bhipattantam arad Purao nipatya vidadara nakhais purantam the personality of Godhead assumed the intonation of Narasimha Deva in order to vanquish the great fears of the demigods. He killed the king of demons, Hiranyakashipu, who challenged the Lord with a club in his hand. By placing the demon on his thighs and piercing him with his nails, rolling his eyebrows in anger and showing his fearful teeth and mouth. Text 15. Antahasarasi urubalena pada grihito. The leader of the elephants, whose leg was attacked in a river by a crocodile of superior strength, was much aggrieved. Taking a lotus flower in his trunk, he addressed the Lord, saying, O original enjoyer, Lord of the universe, O deliverer, as famous as a place of pilgrimage, all are purified simply by hearing your holy name, which is worthy to be chanted. Text 16. Shrutva hari satam aranarthinam aprameyas chakra yuddha pratpatagaraja bhujadhiruddhaha chakrena nakravadanam vinipatya tasmat dhashte pragraha bhagavana kripa yojahara the personality of Godhead, after hearing the elephant's plea, felt that the elephant needed his immediate help, for he was in great distress. Thus, at once the Lord appeared there on the wings of the king of birds, Garuda, fully equipped with his weapon, the wheel chakra. With the wheel, he cut to pieces the mouth of the crocodile to save the elephant, and he delivered the elephant by lifting him by his trunk. Text 17. Jayan Gunai Rabarajo Piadite Sutanam Lokan Pichakrama Imana Ida Athadiya Jaha Shama Vamanane Vamanena Jagra Tipa the Chalena Yachnam Tipa Ticharan Prabhuvir Na Chalyaha. The Lord, although transcendental to all material modes, still surpassed all the qualities of the sons of Aditi known as the Adityas. The Lord appeared as the youngest son of Aditi, and because he surpassed all the planets of the universe, he is the supreme personality of Godhead. On the pretense of asking for a measurement of three footsteps of land, he took away all the lands of Bali Maharaja. He asked simply because without begging, no authority can take one's rightful possession. Text 18. Narto balerayam urukrama pada saucham apa sikhadratavato Bali Maharaja, who put on his head the water washed from the lotus feet of the Lord, did not think of anything besides his promise. In spite of being forbidden by his spiritual master, the king dedicated his own personal body to fulfill the measurement of the Lord's third step. For such a personality, even the kingdom of heaven, which he conquered by his strength, was of no value. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Thank you so much for such nice recitation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. If someone can enable my screen sharing. Still saying host is disabled. Yeah, I can share now. Sorry. Krishna, um, Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity again to um, 
share something. So we're going to discuss three verses today. It's uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, uh, um, seventh chapter, verse 11, 12, and 13. Um, maybe we can recite the shloka first. Um, Satre mamasa bhagavan haya shirasato sakshat sayagna purushas tapaniya varana chando mayo makha mayo akhila devatatma vacho bhabur ushati shrasato asya nashta the Lord appeared as the high grief incarnation in the sacrifice performed by me, Brahma. He is the personified sacrifices and the hue of his body is golden. He is the personified Vedas as well and the super soul of all demigods. When he breathed, all the sweet sounds of the Vedic hymns come out of his nostrils. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Vedic hymns are generally meant for sacrifices performed by fruited workers who also want to satisfy the demigods to achieve their fruitive result. But the Lord is the personified sacrifice. And personified. I think he must be in London. I don't know. Sorry. Could you... Please, can you go on mute? Mostly for London. Um, sorry. So I'll just um, go over the purport by Srila Prabhupada again. The Vedic hymns are generally meant for sacrifices performed by fruitive workers who also want to satisfy the demigods to achieve their fruitive result. But the Lord is the personified sacrifices and personified Vedic hymns. Therefore, one who is directly a devotee of the Lord is a person who has automatically both served the purposes of sacrifices and pleased the demigods. The devotee of the Lord may not perform any sacrifice or may not please the demigods as per Vedic injunctions, and still the devotees are on a higher level than the fruitive workers or the worshippers of different demigods. Go to the next verse. So it's uh, verse 12. Matsyo yuganta samaye manuno palabdha shori mayo nikhila Jeevani kaya ketaha vastram sittanu rubhe salile mukham mukhan me adaya tatra vijaharava ved margan. A translation by Srila Prabhupada. At the end of the millennium, the would be Vaivashyata Manu. The name uh, of Vaivashita Manu of the name Satyavrata would see that the Lord in the fish incarnation is the shelter of all kinds of uh, living entities up to those in the earthly planets. Because of my fear of the vast water at the end of millennium, Brahmaji is saying this, because of my fear of the vast water at the end of the millennium, the Vedas came out of my mouth and the Brahma's mouth, and the Lord enjoys those vast waters and protects the Vedas. During one day of Brahma, there are 14 Manus, and the end of each Manu, there is devastation up to the earthly planets. And the vast water is fearful even to Brahma. So in the beginning of the would-be Vaivarsata Manu, such devastation would be seen by him. There would be many other incidents also, such as the killing of the famous Sankhashura, 
this foretelling is by the past experience of Brahmaji, who knew that in that fearful, devastating scene, the Vedas would come out of his mouth. So he's foretelling this. The Vedas will come out of his mouth, but the Lord in his fish incarnation not only would save all living entities, namely the demigods, animals, men, and great sages, but would also save the Vedas. In verse 13, Shiro Dadava Mara Danava Yutapanam Yutapanam Unmat Natam Amrita Labdaya Adi Deva Rishthena Kachapa Vapur Vidadhara Gotram Nidra Kshana Adri Parivarta Kashana Kandu Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The primeval Lord then assumed the tortoise incarnation in order to serve at the resting place pivot for the Mandara mountain, which was acting as the churning rod. The demigods and demons were churning the ocean of milk with the Mandara mountain in order to extract nectar. The mountain moved back and forth, scratching the back of Lord Tortoise which is Lord um, Kurma, who, while partially sleeping, was experiencing an itching sensation. Although it is not our experience, there is no question within this universe. Even the modest, modern scientists accept that there are hundreds and thousands of planets hovering over our heads, and each of them has different kind of climatic conditions. Srimad Bhagavatam gives much information which may not tally with our present experience. But as far as Indian sages are concerned, knowledge is received from the Vedic literatures. And the authorities accept without any hesitation that we should look through the pages of authentic books of knowledge, Shastra, Shastra Chakshurva. So we cannot deny the existence of the ocean of milk as stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam unless and until we have experimentally seen all the planets hovering in space. Since such an experiment is not possible, naturally we have to accept the statement of Srimad Bhagavatam as it is because it is so accepted by spiritual leaders like Sridhar Swami, Jiva Goswami, Vishnu Chakrabarti, and others. The Vedic process is to follow in the footsteps of great authorities. That, and that is the only process for knowing with that which is beyond our imagination. The primeval Lord, being all-powerful, can do whatever he likes, and therefore... His assuming the incarnation of a tortoise or a fish for serving a particular purpose is not at all astonishing. Therefore, we should not have any hesitation whatsoever in accepting the statement of the authentic scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam. The gigantic work of churning the milk ocean by the combined effort of the demigods and the demons required a gigantic resting ground or pivot for the gigantic Mandara hill. Thus, to help the attempt of the demigods, the primeval Lord assumed the incarnation of a gigantic tortoise swimming in the ocean of milk. At the same time, the mountain scratched his backbone as he was partially sleeping and thus relieved his it itching sensation. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurve namaha shri chaitanya mano bhishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadamahiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru 
ಶ್ರೀಯುತಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹಗರ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾವದೂತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಸಹಗರ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ಜೀವ ಸಾರಿ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೇವ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚತಾರಿ ಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ I seek your blessings that I can say something which is useful and aligned to the, um, you know, Parampara and what Srila Prabhupada has taught us. Um, as I said, I have no knowledge or realization. I'm trying to repeat what I've heard in the various lectures and in Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, I seek for forgiveness well in advance because I may say something. um which is probably not correct but the intention is right so please i seek your blessings i can say something which is helpful um i think the verses today are very beautiful uh we've heard so much that jan karm chame divyam you may be tita tata like to hear about the um the birth uh, past times of the lord the uh the actual um activities of the lord is um is so divine um that if we hear it again and again then um, we will not take the birth again and we will go back home back to god and and we are talking about three avatars today of the lord one is high grieve avatar i mean to be very honest i had not heard about high grieve avatar that much before so i've uh, listened to a few lectures and compiled some notes so i'll um share what i have learned recently um and then we'll also talk about matsya avatar um as well as kurma avatar um um who are more commonly um known in the various past times of the lord um at least um as i uh, had heard before but before we go into them i think in the third um shloka which is um takes 13 i think propad says in the purport uh, how do we believe in um in the creation in the churning of the milk ocean and some of the information given here and essentially um we know like there are three types of praman um there is pratyaksh praman there is um which is which is pretty much like what our senses can see and observe and we say we can see it so we believe it there is anuman praman which is we based on what we know and experience we say this is um um what we can you know uh, make an assumption based on our knowledge and our understanding and 
and I experience. And then there is Shabd Praman, which is what comes in the descending form, which is through the scriptures, through what, um, uh, you know, we hear from um, the Guru Parampara. And I think um, some of these incarnations, I mean, so I think Srila Prabhupada talks about the, um, essentially the milk ocean, like, is there an ocean like the milk ocean? And we read in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, how Priyavrata Maharaj, um, you know, the Bhumandal, which is, you know, the, the 14 planetary system, the middle one of it, he divides it into seven concentric islands, um, the center one of which is um is Bharat um Khanda and then there are seven islands and then between them the first one is the salty ocean but then there is the milk ocean the ocean of sugarcane juice and the ocean of liquor and and so many other substances substances and it it gives all the details and within the the central um Bharat Khanda it's further divided into nine varshas and in the center of that is the uh, is Jambudweep, Jambudweep, which is within which is the Mandarachal mountain, which is used for the churning. Or um, um, so like I mean, there are detailed descriptions in our scriptures for the various um, geographical um, composition of the universe, as well as all the various avatars and how Lord comes and you know protects. Um, his devotees and destroys the demon so and reestablishes um, you know the principles of religion um so if we with your permission maybe we can start with the um lord's incarnation as high grief um which is um um uh, also i think uh, incarnation of high grief is also uh, known as um um, incarnation of knowledge uh, in in various places. In fact, um, um, I wasn't aware, but there are lots of temples of Lord Hayagriv in South India. In fact, there's one temple in Tiruvananthapuram where it's Lord, Lord Hayagriv himself. And then there are a lot of other temples um, in South India, including like Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Pondicherry, where it is Lakshmi Hayagriv. So they are worshipped together. And Lord Hayagriv is the incarnation, which is half horse, uh, Haya, which is stands for horse, and, and half half man. So just like there are uh, Narsingha Dev is half lion, half man incarnation, High Grief avatar is half horse, half man incarnation. He's always in the sitting posture with his four hands. One of his hands is, is um, I think, in the meditative pose, another hand where he's holding a scripture. Then I think he's holding the Shankha, uh, the Panchajanya Shankha in one hand and, and Sudarshan Chakra in the other. So like that's um, the best way to imagine, he's golden, um, uh, if effulgent in color, um, and he is a symbol of knowledge. In fact, um, in South India, I'm led to believe that um, there's a place in Udipi where um, a lot of people go for Vidyaram Sanskar or ha um, Hati Pani Sanskar, I think, uh, and uh, and essentially, all the children would go and they give a bowl of rice where they write Om or Ram to signify, which is in front of both Lord High Grief and Mother Saraswati, who is uh, energy of the Lord. And uh, also, you know, um, is the um, is the energy from the energetic who is the source of all knowledge. And Krishna says, um, Sarvasya chaham hidi sanna vishto mata smite gyanam apohanam cha vedesh cha sarve raham veda vedyo. He is the source of all Vedas, right? Um, Vedanta krita veda veda veda. Um, so anyway, so Lord is the source of Vedas and he, he comes in the form of High Grieve Avatar, which is a source of knowledge. So um, it is explained um, um, in in various places. There are three or four stories with respect to High Grieve Avatar. Um, um, 
he um, it's it's said that he appears from sankarshana so we all know that um, the lord um, um, uh, Bal, uh, Lord Balram is the first expansion and from Balaram comes the first Chaturviva um, who is the Chaturviva in Dwaraka so Ch by Chaturviva we know as um, Sankarshan, Vasudev, Pradyumna and Anurud and then the second Chaturviva is again the same um, uh, uh, Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna and Anurudh in, in Vaikuntha. And from the Sankarshan um, um, uh, comes um, uh, from the Sankarshan in Vaikuntha comes um, the Lord or Hayagriva. And it is said that um, um, uh, you know Agyana comes um, Agyana takes the form of demons and steal, they steal the Veda. So it said that there were um, there were two demons by the name of Madhu and Kaitab. We all know one of the names of Krishna is Madhu Sudhana, I would think. And also there's another na name for the Lord Madhu Kaitabhari, um, who is like he's the killer of Madhu and Kaitab. Um, and Madhu represents um, a mode of passion and kaitab represents mode of uh, ignorance so like it's um, madhu and kaitab and how um, 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 they they steal um, the um, um, the the vedas and and they uh, they go into the um, um uh, neither region so it said how did uh, when this this happened this particular incident happened when uh, actually um brahmaji had just come out of um of having the darshan of the lord um in vaikuntha you know so when brahmaji appears in the lotus stem if you remember and then he um or he goes into the lotus stem comes back and then he prays for um, thousands of years, and then finally, after the tapa, he gets the um, darshan of Vaikuntha. He shakes hands with the Lord, and he gets the Vedas, and he comes. And at that time, um, it is said that he um, he had the Vedas, and then Madhu and Kaita um, came, and then they they stole the Vedas and went to the neither regions. But Brahmaji had not yet started the creation. So um, I think in one of the lectures I was hearing, Prabhu was saying that uh, at that time, the reason Madhu and Kaita, even though Brahmaji had not started the creation, how they came about was because Brahmaji, as soon as he got the knowledge from the Lord, he started to feel a little bit of pride that, you know, I am now going to do this. So in order to correct that, um, they, you know, like uh, both mode of passion and ignorance personified in form of Madhu and Ketab came and then they stole the Vedas and went to the netherly region. And then um, Lord comes in the form of Hayagriva and then he kills Madhu and Ketab and, and gets the Vedas back uh, to Lord Brahma. So that's um, one, one story. There's another, um, and, and we all know, right? I mean, it's so hard to be able to um, uh, overcome the modes of material nature, uh, which is a uh, mode of passion and mode of ignorance. Uh, when Krishna says himself, Devi, Shagodamai, it's so hard. Mama Maya Duratyaya, the only way out is that we have to surrender to the Lord. So even in this case, Lord Brahma surrendered to the Lord. So the Lord appeared as Hayagriva Avatar and then got the Vedas back for him. Um, and then as soon as the Lord comes to him, he becomes free from passion and ignorance. Um, so there was um, there's another pastime when there is a another demon named Hayagriv. Now, um, what happens is this is um, given in um, um, in I think Devi Bhagavatam, where um, 
uh, it is said that uh, there was this demon who was born of uh, Kashyap Muni and and Mother Dan. You know, like there are uh, three mothers or three wives of uh, Kashyap Rishi, where all the demons and Rakshasas and others uh, come about. There is Diti from, um, and then there is Danu, and there's another uh, wife of um, Sage Kashyap, who uh, from from whom all the um, demons and um, and and the Danavas come. So this the um, Hay, this Hayagriv was um, who was also half horse and half man uh, form was born of um, um, Kashyap Muni and um, and Mother Danu. And then what happened was he was uh, very powerful already, and then he prayed to Mother Durga to um um uh, to you know um um uh, get a boon that no one can kill him other than someone who is um similar in appearance to him so and we know that in the um 840000 species um, of life, this is not one of those, right? You remember when there was the golden deer and Lakshman said to Mother Sita, you know, the, the golden deer doesn't exist in the 840,000 species um, that the Lord has created. So don't worry, it has got to be a um, you know, not the real one, but but anyway. So, uh, so he was quite confident that there'll be no high grief, which means then he can do whatever, and he started to, um, yeah, create quite a lot of um, um, destruction on various planets. He started to um, be a nuisance, um, even for the devdas. So they they prayed to the Lord. And then Lord Vishnu, it is said, um, uh, fought with the demon uh, for a long time. And then uh, because he had the boon from um, Mother Durga, so uh, Lord kind of appreciated that and did not kill him. So while the Lord was in a sitting posture and meditating, um, what happened was Lord's Lord had his... Um, uh, bow um, next to him. And then the Devatas were um, very, very worried that, you know, while the Lord is meditating and resting, will the demon high grief come and, you know, attack the the uh, demigods or uh, he may harm the Lord while he's resting. So what happens is, as a result of that, um, um the um, um uh, uh, they they try to send termites onto the bow of the lord and there is a string which then snaps which um the string then snaps the head of the lord somehow the wish karma comes and then they put a white horse on top of the lord and then the lord kills high grieve and then regains his original form so I mean that's that's one story, and there's another story where Lord Brahma uh, does yagna. So Prabhupada says in his purport that you know he appeared from the um, avan kund of Lord Brahma, and Brahma was doing the yagna when uh, he was um, offering the various um, offerings, and from that came. Um, um, you know, the um, like Lord Hagrief personally came to uh, take all the offerings and then distributed among demigods. So Lord Hagrief appeared in the Havan Kund or Yagya Kund of Lord Brahma himself. So, anyways, just um, I mean, the key things to remember is I mean, Hay Lord Hagrief is essentially um, uh, he he is the personification of knowledge. And um, and learning and it is um, and clearly he's he's one um, uh, was not very well well known across India uh, but but somehow yeah um, 
definitely one uh, we should know more about. Um, his he was I was uh, Friday was Akshay Tritya and among the various messages, there's one message uh, which said that Lord Hari to appeared on Akshay Tritya itself. Um, so just um, something to know. I've also heard in another lecture that he. Um, appeared when it is Balaram Jayanti, so it could be it could be one of, one of the two. Maybe in different kalpas he appears on different days. Um, anyways, there's uh, so that's uh, Lord Hayagriv. I mean, there's so much else, but um, I'm conscious of time. So if you move on to um, Matsya Avatar, which is um, we all know is the fish incarnation of the Lord and uh, um, uh, Satravit Maharaj, he's different Satravit um, than, you know, Satravit Muni, who we know, who wrote Damodar Ashtakam, which we sing in um, in Kartik Mass. Um, so, Vaivasvata um, Manu um, was Satravit Muni in his previous um, life. And then uh, the description is given as to... Um, at, at the part at the time of you know partial devastation, uh, which is when you know Bhu Bhuva and Swa all were submerged, and um, at that time Brahmaji himself says that he himself was scared, and he was as he was scared the Vedas fell out of his mouth, and then the Lord appeared um, in the Matsya incarnation where he then goes into the um, into the water and get the um, Vedas and and gives gives back to um, uh, Lord Brahma. It's the the way the um, story is described is King Satravata was performing austerities near River Kritimala. It's in Kerala, and um, you know as he was picking some water up, you know, like when we go and worship um, at the rivers, we offer the water back um, to the Ganges, for example. And so that's what he was doing. And he realized that he had a fish in his hand in the water uh, he had in his hand. And and uh, surprise, surprise, this fish could, could actually speak. So, um, so the little fish appears and asks for shelter to Maharaj Satravata. Um, and then um, Maharaj Satravata takes the ship and a fish and in order to give it shelter, it puts the, uh, he puts the fish in his kamandalu and then comes home and in the, from the jug, the next day the fish becomes so big that it can't fit into the um, into the jug itself and calls out for King Satravata and wants a bigger space. Then he puts the fish in the um, in the pond. Then the fish expands further. The next day, then he puts the fish into into a well. Then again expands. Then into a lake and expands again. And finally he puts. Um, the fish into the ocean. And then, um, you know, um, uh, when the Maharaj uh, Satravata was putting the fish in the ocean, uh, the fish says to Maharaj, oh, Maharaj, please don't leave me here alone. What if the Timingala fish will come and eat? And then at that time, Maharaj Satravata realizes that, no, 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 you can only be Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he starts to offer him uh, prayers. And that's when the Lord, in the form of Matsya Avtar, instructs Maharaj Satyavata, and then he asks him to collect all the herbs, animals, and and the different species and the people, and he asks him to get the Satrishis as well to uh, come together, um, you know, so that um, uh, when when he will come, uh, come back during devastation to keep those ready. And then um, uh, there will be a boat that will come. Everyone had to go and get onto the boat. He's supposed to take the Vasu uh, Vasuki uh, snake serpent and put it on the horn of the um, of the Matsavatar and then tie the boat to it. So that was the... Um, you know, the service given to Maharaj Satyavata. And it's said that Lord in the Matsya incarnation was like huge. He was 
8 million miles long. Can you believe it? 8 million miles. Um, um, it's it's amazing. And then uh, while they were on the, uh, on the um, you know, when the devastation happened, um, uh, as the Lord had described, everything happens. And then as the Lord was pulling, uh, you know, the boat, um, um, he was uh, giving instructions um, and the Vedas to uh, Maharaj Satravata as he was doing that. I'm conscious um, it's 2036. Maybe if we move on to um, uh, the third avatar, which is um, uh, Kurma avatar. Again, um, I think everyone probably here knows the pastime of the Lord as Kurma avatar. It is said very beautifully that how uh, because the Lord has an itching sensation, he wanted the Mandarachal mountain to, you know, itch his back. And he was in ecstasy um, in Yoga Nidra where he was partially sleeping as his eyes were partially closed and he was enjoying it while, uh, you know, the summer of the month and in the milk ocean was going on. Um, it said that... Um, I mean, this particular, the whole Samudh Manthan uh, episode also tells us that we are so dependent on the Lord, on everything, right? Even the demigods and the devatas, sorry, and the demons were fully um, dependent on the Lord, it said, like how, um, you know, from the word go as um, um, uh, the Lord came up with the idea of doing this to the devatas, he asked them to convince the demons, um, they were not sure how they will start. So there's a Mandarachal mountain, both the demons and devtas tried to lift it and half of them were dying. They couldn't even lift it. Lord came on Garuda, lifted it. Then, um, you know, uh, nothing could, there was no way to hold the weight of the mountain. So that's when the Lord comes in the form of uh, Kurma Avtar to give it again some foundation and uh, and it said that the uh, that the surface area of Kurmadev was eight hundred thousand miles. Again, like huge, right? Like from here to India or here to US, if you take a flight, it's roughly about five thousand uh, seven thousand miles. And like here, here we are talking about, or I think it's nine thousand kilometers or something like that. But anyways, this is like. 800,000 miles. Can you imagine how, um, how, what's the size of Kurmadev? Anyways, that's um, who holds that. And then we all know for at every step, even from the top, um, Mandarachal Mountain wasn't stable. So the Lord sits on the top with his thousand farm, uh, hand, hand form. He then, uh, the both devatas and demigods are tired. So then he, he you know, uh, goes into them as energy to, to drive, to help them do mantra. And for every step in terms of being able to do this activity, um, they had to completely surrender to the Lord and depend on him, which is also the case with us, right? At every step, I mean, our only shelter is the Supreme Personality of God. I'll probably uh, pause there. Um, I, again, ask for forgiveness for any anything which I have said wrong. Uh, please forgive me, but if there are any comments or questions, we can take them for a few minutes. Hare Krishna. If not, thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Please can you accept my humble obeisance as a good Shrapa Upad. Thank you very much for the nice class, Prabhuji. Um, nice research on Ayagriva incarnation and Matcha also. Uh, one little uh, comment, Prabhuji. There is 8.4 million species out of life on this planet. Thank you. 8.4 million, that's right. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. That's right, mother. Thank you. Okay.
Any other comments? Thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. All. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhuji, for a wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.